Makati, for your happiest, happiest place on earth. It's a feel great Thursday. Do you agree? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Sige nga, can I just ask you to just greet the person next to you, behind you or nasa harap ninyo, and flash your sweetest smile. Make sure it's your sweetest smile dahil nasa buwan pa tayo ng pagrero. Ayan. So did you notice that we're already in the tail end of February? Ang buwan ng Feb Ibig. Tama ba? Pansin nyo ba yun? Ayan. Dahil dyan, meron akong question sa inyo. And I need you to share this for like a couple of minutes only. I need you to share this to, the, to your partner. Choose a partner, the person next to you. What has been your biggest Love blessing for the month. Ay, napapa... Ay, gaganan. Love blessing for the month. Ito talaga, you felt your love. Either through an event, people. Oo, ba't ni kinikilig? Oo, kinikilig. Oo, parang gusto yata dito mag-share sa harap yung kinilig. Sige nga. Sige, do you all have your partners? Ayun, sa mga likod, kailangan mag-share kahit mga brothers. Talaga sa brothers ako na kasi. Brothers, mag-share po kayo ng love blessing ninyo. Ayan. Sige, two minutes. O yung walang hindi nag-share, tatawagin po namin dito sa stage para dito mag-share sa gitna. Ayan, na-share na ba? Yung iba medyo madami-dami. talaga ako dito sa harap. Paano gusto ko mag-join? <laughs> o, oh, parang asaya ng love blessing nila. Ayan. Thank you for sharing your love blessing. Di ba pagka nag-share tayo about love, talaga ang saya ng feeling, no? Talagang parang napapangiti ka. Oh, sabi dun sa likod, hindi rin. <laughs> love? Ano yan? <laughs> Ayan. Sige, as for me, brothers and sisters, you know, the Lord has expressed His love for me. Through my, through my friends and through the people around me last week. Because last week, I just celebrated my big 40th birthday. Yeah! Ayan. Hindi ako nahiya doon. Diba? Gift of life, what more could I ask for? Thank you, Lord. And uh, speaking of 40, brothers and sisters, I reflected on the number and apparently this is a significant biblical number. It's a number of judgment and testing. And if you may have noticed or may have heard probably, there have been many stories that bore this number 40. And one of the more familiar stories we could ever think of or heard before, yung Noah's Ark. Familiar? But where God sent rains and flooded the earth to destruction. 40 days, 40 nights. And I realized that it became so real to me, this story. Oh, hindi ako nag-build ng ark. At one point in my life, I felt, I felt that I was also in that flood. I felt that I was drowning already with so many challenges in my life. Sino dito at one point in your life, yung parang, ang bigat, parang nalunod ka na, hindi makaahon. Ayan, di ba? So relate. Amen, amen. But you know what, brothers and sisters? Just like in any other stories in the Bible and in Noah's Ark, both for you and me, this is the message of the Lord. That no matter how challenging our lives can be, He will always, always with us. Go with us. And then at the end of it all, we will experience nothing but goodness and victory in our lives. Amen.
worship you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we ask that you continue to fill this place with your presence, oh Lord. Jesus Christ, we pray and that we ask for your mercy. Jesus, connect us to the Father, that the Father will be able to speak to us in a very special way, in a very powerful way. Lord, with your kind of love. Embrace us tonight, Jesus Christ, and hold our hands, Lord. And tonight, Jesus, we ask that you remember our brothers and sisters who are hurting right this very moment. Remember our brothers and sisters who are going through some challenges in their lives. Who are on the verge of giving up on hope. Remember our brothers and sisters, Lord, who are heartbroken. Father, they need you. And grant us the grace and courage, Jesus, to remind us to only seek your face and seek your presence tonight. For only your presence will give us the joy, the joy that nothing and no one could ever take away from us.
about to sing this part. Let's ask the Lord to continue to grace us with His presence. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Raise your voices to heaven and let the Lord hear you right now. the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah. Amen. One thing is for sure, God is here. Amen. He says in His Word, when two or more are gathered in His, in, and He will be in their midst, and gathered in His name, He will be in their midst. So whatever you're going through right now, know that the God who has the best plans for you will hear you out tonight and see you through. Amen. May napansin ko yung bago sa akin. Bible. Ang ganda, no? Ang <laughs> ganda na watch ko, no? Who loves superhero movies like I do? Raise your hands. Before, nung bata ako, um, Captain America's shield was a very lame superhero weapon. Tama? Kung nakikita yung comics, everyone had a sword. Everyone else had a hammer. Everyone else, every other character had something that they could fight with. And what did Captain America use? He used protection. <laughs> Everyone could fling something and, and pulverize armies. Captain America would just shield himself. Hi, Sky. <laughs> but I believe and I, I love the, the recent superhero movies that Marvel came out with. Na parang yung dating malamyang shield became a very aerodynamic powerful alien hitting weapon. Amen? Tatry ko. Hindi, wag na. The weapon is a shield. Your weapon can be a shield. Amen? We're gonna talk about hurts tonight. And sometimes, we will realize that the best weapon is a shield. Not a sword. Not a hammer. Not an axe. Not a gun, but a shield. The best weapon to protect you from abuse is not to attack, but to protect yourself. Amen? And so as we continue tonight, as we get on the second talk of the Hurt Attack series entitled Surgery, Say Surgery. surgery. Last week we talked about, his, uh, sorry, two weeks ago, we talked about history. We, div- we discovered what was the historical reasons or patterns on why we are hurt? Tonight, we're going to do surgery. Who wants to get operated on tonight? Raise your hands. We're going to cut out the areas in your life that hurt you. Ready for that? Our anesthesiologist will perform his magic on you tonight before we cut it out. But be ready to know a certain truth. It's not what we expect. To cut out hurt in your life, sometimes it's not something you do on that person who hurt you, but it's something you do by protecting yourself. Amen? Let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, Limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word, so I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Together let's raise our hand toward God's word and let's sing this song. Hallelujah. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. 
Amen. Before we read God's word, I just like to ask you, who among you have boss problems? Raise, don't raise your hands. Baka nandito yung boss nyo. Who among you hindi kayo like ng boss nyo? Who among you does not is not liked by your boss? Marami ba? Relate, sino relate? Taas nyo yung kanan ng kilay nyo. Alright. The character in the Bible that we will continue reading on, David, had a boss who didn't like him. In fact, his boss, simply lang naman, wanted to kill him. King Saul, diba David, he played the lyre. Lyre is like a string instrument. So he was playing the lyre one day, and this is what they, uh, King Saul did. Let's read from 1 Samuel verse 12. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre. And as he usually did, Saul had a spear in his hand, and he hurled it, um, and he hurled it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. The striking verse is the next. But David eluded him twice. What did David do? Did he say, come on, hurt me, I'm ready. Did he say that? He avoided the spear. He avoided the hurt. He avoided the abuse. Twice. Not once, but twice. When you're abused, when you're a subject of not just hurt, but abuse, our message tonight is simple. Leave the area of harm. Amen? If you want to be a martyr, volunteer in Syria. But if you're being abused, whether it be by a loved one, by a colleague, or by a boss, our main message is protect yourself and leave the area of harm. Amen? What's amazing is David did not seek vengeance towards Saul. So imagine, hinagi sa na siya ng spear. Twice, ibig sabihin, not once, but twice siyang balak patayin. Hindi yung tipong spur of the moment. He was intentionally, want, Saul intentionally wanted to kill him. Um, after that, the story goes on. Saul was looking after David. They were running with Saul's armies. They were running after David's 100 men because they wanted to kill David. And in their search, they eventually ended up inside a cave. So rest sila. Saul did not know that deeper inside the cave was David and his army. It was a very long and deep cave. So si Saul, rest time, ginawa niya, nagano siya, how do you say it? In the Bible it says, he relieved himself. Sa Tagalog, hindi number one eh. Nasa Bible, check nyo. Saul did the number two in the cave. So he was... Siguro, no one, he did not notice. Imagine, Saul was in the cave, nakaupo, nag-jitter box. Biglang, David was sneaking up behind him. Nangyari ito, ah. David sneaked up behind Saul, and he was near Saul with his sword, and he was ready to strike Saul and kill him. As in, Saul was so busy with his iPad, na hindi niya napansin, may tao pala sa likod habang nag siya. So, but what did David do? Did he kill him? Because every one of his army was saying, Pagkakataon mo na. You can exact vengeance on your abuser, on the man who hurt you, on the man who is your problem right now. David did not do that. What he did, he cut off a cloth from Saul's robe and he fled. Saul did not know he was there and he left. And David left. Later on, David saw Saul again in the battlefield and sabi ni, Saul, ni David kay Saul, Boss, Remember this cloth? Nagtaka si Saul. Uy, kilala ko yung color na yan. Ah. Parang, parang jacket ko yan. Ah. So nakita ni, na ni Saul, sa kanya yon. David said, I could have killed you. I could have exacted my vengeance upon you. But I did not. Let's read from 1 Samuel 24 what David said. From evil doers come evil deeds. So my hand will not touch you. Translated, it says, I'm not a bad person. You are. I won't be like you. I'm, I'll do good because I am good. David healed his pain with love. 
Are you ready to heal your pain with love? Are you ready to heal your hurts with love? Today we learn about that. Father, we pray that you bless us tonight with a special message that would free us from abuse, free us from the hurt, Lord Jesus. Teach us in how we should leave the area of harm, Lord, so that we can be free. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's honor God's word again. Hallelujah. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my back. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. You can take your seats. Thank you, Lynch. Thank you, worship team. Okay, lang ba? Brother Randy and I will be co-preaching tonight. Amen? Amen. I welcome you, Brother Thor. Randy. <laughs> Can we give the Lord a clap offering for Thor? Relova. Our one big message for us to, for you tonight is, is simple. It's let love heal you. I know that all of us, we go through a lot of hurts every day. Every time, every time we, we breathe in, we breathe out, in the normal course of our lives, we get hurt a lot. But here's our message. Let love heal you. Let the love of God heal you. Maybe you've been hurt, yes. But what we need to do is let love heal us. And uh, as, as we're going to explain tonight... What's important is that you allow yourself, that you open your heart, you open your life to the healing love and the healing power of God so that this kind of love will heal you. And this, it's not an ordinary kind of healing. It, it, it's, it's supernatural healing. Can you say supernatural? Supernatural. And how do you let love heal you? We're going to tell you, we're going to teach you, we're going to give you steps. But another big message for us is that when you're being hurt, when you're being abused, what you need to do was, you, 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 let's learn from David. Siguro nag-harp siya, sabi, he eluded him twice. David did not welcome the sword. Oh no, the, sword's, the, the spear's coming after me. It's coming towards me. Here I am. No. So, habang nag-harp siya, nakita niya, padating sa kanya, don't you notice sometimes, pag merong, pag merong danger, parang nagsa-slow motion yung, yung, yung mga ano, di ba? yung mga bagay papunta sa inyo. So nakita niya. So sabi niya, ano kaya? Tatakbo ba ako? Iiwan ba ako dito? And then he went. <laughs> Hanggang ganun lang ang hirap. <laughs> Message, wake up and walk away. Wake up and walk away. I'm telling you now, if you're being abused, if you're being hurt, if you're being maligned, if people are hurting you, you have the power to wake up and walk away. Wake up and walk away and start, start taking care of yourself. Start thinking about yourself. It's not bad for us to think about ourselves. You don't just wait for, for that person to completely take advantage of you and hurt you. <clears throat> Tell people, oops, I'm not going to let you hurt me anymore. Short cuento. You know, my mom, when she was still alive, she had a problem with gambling. And, and every time, I, I don't think she intentionally does this to hurt us. Especially that time when it was my turn to pay for the debts. You know, my, my dad won't give her money. She won't, we won't give her money. But she will find a way to get money from someone else. Okay? So that she can gamble. And one day I, I said, okay, okay, wake up and walk away. I told her. Mom, I love you very much. Have no doubt. Never doubt that. Okay? But I'm so hurt already. Every time, I, I, can't, I can't even have build up my savings, but I'm, I'm really getting hurt, and I think this is abusive already. So this is what I'm going to tell you, Mom. My way of walking away is, if it has anything to do with gambling, sorry, I cannot help you. Yeah, I have money. I have millions in the bank. <laughs> but if it has anything to do with, with, with gambling, like a debt incurred because of gambling, sorry, I won't help you. And you know what? It, it, it felt so 
liberating. I felt so liberated that finally I was able to stand up and say, wait, I will not allow you to hurt me anymore. I love you very much, but this is it. And I said that in, with, with, with respect. Now, here's the thing. Why do abused people tolerate abuse? Why do abused people tolerate abuse? I won't ask you to raise your hands tonight if you're abused because I know that all of us, I think, this is just me, all of us, we've gone through abuse, whether it's from our boss, from our spouse, from our brothers and sisters, from people we hate, from, 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 from government, from, from, from all walks of life, in all aspects of life, I'm sure we've all went through abuse only in different levels, okay? Now, why do abused, the abused tolerate abuse? It's simple, okay? They don't, they, they tolerate abuse is because at the back of their minds, if, if you're going to open up their hearts and try to search the answer there, it's, it's going to be plain and simple that they don't love themselves. Abused people tolerate abuse because at the back of their minds, is they're not that worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. When someone abuses you, I don't know. May, may, I, I don't know if you've gone through this, this experience. If someone abuses you, diba, sometimes you can't, you can't even look, up to, look, look at them in the eye because you, you, don't, you don't really love yourself. You, remember we said that we, 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 we don't get what we deserve. We, de we get what we think we deserve. And uh, th th this, that's the thing about abuse. The more you're abused, the more, the more you hate yourself. The more you're abused, because the abuser would normally say that I'm doing this to you because you deserve it. I'm doing this to you. No, I'm, I'm not supposed to do this to you. But you're making me do this to you, okay? So it's your fault. It's your fault. And the more we're abused, the more we kind of believe that. Yeah, it's my fault. Yeah, I'm no good. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yes, yeah, maybe. Especially if you love the person. You say, oh, I love him. I love him so much. And I'm allowing him. I'm allowing him. You're not saying it outright, but in your heart, you're allowing people to hurt you. So, so again, the message is wake up. Wake up and walk away. Clear? Hello? <laughs> Clear? All right. So, walk away. Para ako may shoes. This is a very controversial topic, amen? Normally, when you listen to religious people talk about being hurt, we would tell them, forgive. Okay lang yan. But there will come a point that when it leads to abuse, the only best thing to do is to protect yourself and walk away. When you avoid the abuser, it does not mean you don't love, you hate that person. And I talk about, we talk about different kinds of abuse. It can be a parent to you. It could be a boyfriend to you or a girlfriend to you or a, your spouse to you. It could be your boss to you. It could be your barcada to you. Whatever abusive situation you're in, our message, our message is simple. If it is abuse, do not tolerate it because it will never end if you remain there. You got to make a stand, get up, and walk away. Until that person changes, do not come back. Amen? Make me funny story ako. There's this driver of our the company I used to work for. Kuneto lang sa akin yesterday. Um, pinakuha niya, one of the salespeople told the, told the company driver, "Pakikuha sa kotse ko yung sapatos ko." They were in Payatas. They were doing a medical mission there. Tapos sinabi, "Boyong," sinabi ni Mel, "Boyong, pakikuha sa kotse ko yung sapatos ko." She handed him the key. Boyong went there. Yung kotse ng sales rep Bago. Alam niyo yung kotse na may proximity sensor? Ano yun? You don't have to press a button for it to unlock. Even if it's in your pocket, the, the key is in your pocket or in your bag. If you go near the car, anong mangyari? Anong mangyari? Mag-open a lock. 
So, inutusan siya for a five-minute trip to get it in the car and go back. One hour nakalipas, hindi pa bumabalik yung driver. Imagine, a five-minute trip, who can, you can get easily that. The driver never came back, even after an hour. So, nagkamot na ulo yung mga taga-sales. Sabi, saan yung si Boyong? Nagpakula akong shoes. Diyan lang, kita nga nila yung car eh. One of the sales managers went to him and he saw the driver saying, Sir, hindi ko malak eh. Kasi what he did, nangyari, kinuha niya yung shoes. Imagine, kinuha niya yung shoes. Linak niya. Lakad siya. Nalak ko ba? Teka. Oh, naka-unlock. Nalak ko ba? Oh, na-unlock. Gets nyo? Because the keys were with him, Whenever he'd go back, the door would unlock. Tawa ko ng tawa. Sabi ko, napapanood ko lang sa sine yan. Nangyayari pa lang yan. Dolphy lang natin yung ganun eh. When you walk away, stop, getting, stop going back to the area of abuse unless the situation changes. Because it will go on and on and on. If your parent is abusing you, Look for a way to leave. I'm sorry, it is controversial, but it is for your protection. Until the parent changes, finds Jesus, and repents and changes, then you can come back. If a spouse abuses you, leave. I'm not saying divorce. I mean, hopefully the separation will not enable him to continue abusing you and will lead him to change. May He change first before you even decide to come back. Kasi kung babalik-balik ka lang, it will happen again and again. Amen? Sometimes the only way to love an abuser is by avoiding him. Say avoid. You can't expect change to happen if the reasons for the abuse are still there. He still is a drunkard. Your father is still like that. Your boss is still like that. Sometimes, minsan, napipilitan tayo, it's a great job. It's just the boss. If it doesn't change, that will damage your life forever. So start looking for other opportunities and see if that's the plan. There's such a thing that we preach here in the feast. I'm not saying that you should not love your father or your husband or your wife or your spouse or your colleague or your boss or your barkada but you do by loving them from a distance. Amen? Love them from a distance. Protect yourself because if you're always there, that will never change. The situation will never change. Sometimes that's the only way to love or even wake up certain people if you leave the area of abuse. King David was the same, diba? Right? He eluded the, the abuse, but in the same way, he did not exact vengeance on Saul when he had the chance. He could have killed Saul and finished his problems. But he said, I am not like you. I am not a bad person. We know of a lot of people who make revenge their mission. You abused me. I will avenge myself. I will stop you from abusing me by abusing you. But that never will stop your abuse because you become the abuser. You become the person who you feared. A lot of parents, ganun, di ba? Abusive yung father. That kid did not like that. He was abused. When, but when he became a father, subconsciously, he became an abuser to his kid. So you gotta stop the cycle of abuse. You gotta stop hurting and the hurt attack. And say, I will respond with love. David said that. From evildoers come evil deeds. So my hand will not touch, touch you. My hand will not harm you. David said, I'm not bad. You are. I'm a good person. And so I will only do good things. We met a lot of abused people who sadly do not get it. And they sadly pass on the abuse. But revenge will eat up a person. You'll eventually become a zombie. 
na walang konsyensya because you start this, you continue the cycle. If you try to hurt your abuser, your wounds will never be healed. Amen? If you try to hurt your abuser, your wounds will never be healed. We want to call a sister to share her story for five minutes to you on how she encountered a similar situation. Okay lang ba yan? As she goes on stage, let's sing her a song kasi birthday niya. Let's welcome again, Lynch. Happy birthday to you. Ayan. Good evening again, everyone. I have my kodigo para hindi daw lumagpas. Okay, so I was asked to share a bit of my life story. So here I am. Um, let me just start by saying first that um, I'm one of the regular Feast Makati Legaspi servants. And the reason that I was brought here to the feast was because of all the challenges that I had in my life. So to just give you a glimpse of um, what happened, so let me start with my colorful family life first. I came from a broken family. Um, I grew up with my stepdad and my mom. I didn't know or I never had a chance to really know who my, or who my real dad was. I only saw him twice in my life when I was little. And um, sadly, I wouldn't be able to see him anymore because he passed away in 1993. I have six siblings, total of six, uh, six siblings. One from my mother and five from my real dad. So lahat have siblings. Now, um, I have to say that I had a good life growing up. So it was a comfortable life. Uh, I had an experience where we had family drivers, um, a number of house help, and even guard at home and bodyguards as well. So that's, that was the life that I grew up with. Unfortunately, in 1993, my, re my stepdad, rather, my stepdad and my mom got separated and they had their annulment. So they lived separate lives. Now, I, um, I stayed with my mother, my kuya likewise, and um, you know, we just enjoyed a few years together, although what happened or during the, the separation of my mama, my mama and my papa, I really got heartbroken about it. So it was devastating on my part. Now, after a few years, uh, my mom got, um, or my mom fell in love again with another man. And I really saw how happy my mother was with this new man in her life. Asi nakita ko talaga yung saya. But it was short-lived because um, the man um, got killed in uh, 1999. Um, it was an unsolved crime. And um, later on, we um, we realized that this man had um, some shady activities. That's why he got killed. Now, as if it weren't enough for the family, on that same year, 1999, my mother was um, set up for a crime that she did not do. So she was sent to prison. And um, she's still in prison for 17 years now. So that's almost half of my life. So she's still there. Um, now, because of what happened, everything spiraled down in 2000. We lost everything. We had to sell everything. And um, my kuya and I tried to live with our relatives. So, sinubukan namin tumira sa, yon, sa mga kamag-anak namin. But um, we had a hard time adjusting to one another. My kuya stayed with my aunts, but I was sent away. So, I was alone. I, had, I really had no one at that time. And um, at the time, I felt I had no choice but to stay with the family of my first boyfriend. So I had my, my first boyfriend back then. Yet. The family was very helpful. Um, they pitied the situation because of what happened. They pitied me. Um, however, um, my boyfriend and I, um, it wasn't really an ideal relationship since we were young then. And eventually, he became so jealous of many, many things. He became jealous of my friends. He became jealous of my work. He became jealous of a lot of things. That to, the, to the point that um, he would already physically abuse me. 
And um, it went on for a while. Kasi wala akong matatakbuhan eh. Wala akong malalapitan. So I had to stay there. His family didn't know that it was that. It was happening to me. But at one night or one day, I decided I, I had to leave. I had, you know, I, I prayed and I had the courage to, to leave him with the help of another best friend. So I was able to stay away from, from that boyfriend of mine. And uh, I thank God that I'm out of that life already. As for my kuya, um, so with all these things that happened, I suddenly became the breadwinner of the family. And what I didn't mention earlier was that we were shocked to know that my mother had an accumulated debts. And this was because of financial mismanagement. And at the same time, um, she was abused as well by her friends, I mean, her, uh, her generosity. So, madami palang ganon, and I was shocked. And when I learned about it, it was really like huge amount, and I had no choice but to be the one to pay for all the obligations. So, I worked and worked and worked for the family for everything. Um, so, when I left my boyfriend, I had to stay in one room in Mandaluyong. So, not sure kung may mga taga-mandalo yung dito, but ito sa circle. So, ma madalas binabaha kasi doon. So, I had to stay in this one dorm. And um, it was really far from the kind of house or home that I grew up with. So, malit lang siya. And um, I remember that that place, pagka, pagka umuulan, sobra talaga yung baha. Kaya pala talagang relate ako dun sa Noah's Ark kanina, yung baha. So yung tipong pagising ko ng umaga, yung katabi mo na yung baha nandito kasi nandun ako sa ground floor. So hindi rin ako makakapasok sa work. Apart from that, pagka naman, pagka naman hindi umuulan, hindi na tag-ulan, tag-araw, sa ko parang init kasi sira electric fan. And the reason being, kasi yung electric fan, nandun na nag, naglaro na dun yung mga bubit dun sa electric fan. Alam niyo yung bubit? Si na Minnie Mouse at si Mickey Mouse. So, nandun na silang lahat. So, sira. So, that was, that was um, a pitiful state, I must say. Um, now, during this time, of course, I was still drowning in debts. Because I had, again, to pay. Um, I managed to, I managed to um, send allowance to my kuya who never worked and still bum at, at present. But I realized that later on, kulang na yung mga pangtustos ko na sa pamilya. So I prioritized my mother who is in prison. I said, I needed to stop giving allowance to my kuya and he, he has to work anyway. Now, um, he didn't take it lightly. So obviously, nasanay kasi na na nabibigyan namin lahat ng pamilya. So, syempre may mga narinig na rin ako dahil nga nag-stop ako na allowance. But um, I just brushed it off. Now, with all these things that are happening, my social posts or social media posts would always reflect my gratefulness to the Lord. Um, I, I managed to still thank Him despite all these things. And I know that it's the grace of the Lord that allowed me to see Him to see His goodness in my time of empty and even in the time when I had nothing. So I made sure that it's my personal conviction to post that in social media na kahit ano pang mangyari, I needed to be thankful anyway. I have to be very grateful. And because of this, my relatives, ang nakikita lang nila is yung puro saya. But never did they bother to ask how I am really. So... At the time na nagtitipid ako, na sobrang pagtitipid ko sa sarili ko, naalala ko na ang, kina ang kinain ko na lang nun, yung pudding, favorite ko yun yung sa bakery, yung 2 pesos and 50 cents lang. Sino mo na makain? Baka ako na lang yata. So, back then. So talagang favorite, buti na lang favorite ko talaga siya. So yun yung kinakain ko nung time na yun. Now, nung mga moment pa, yung mga panahon pa na yun, so dahil nga masaya nakikita nila sa post at hindi ko naman napopost yung pudding na yun, I, I got I even got um, a message from my tita and it was a long message and it was a harsh message. Her message was this, Hindi mo na binibigyan ng allowance ng kuya mo. Kawawa naman siya. Ikaw puro kapasarap. 
ulitin ko lang, hindi mo na binibigyan ng allowance ang kuya mo, kawawa naman siya, ikaw puro kapasarap. So, you know, brothers and sisters, that time, that moment, I could vividly recall, it really broke my heart. Like, crushed my soul, crushed my heart because at that time, I really had nothing. I was expecting a comfort, most especially from a blood relative, but I didn't, I wasn't able to get it. Instead, I had the harshest words from her. I tried to reason out na, hindi dita, wala na po talaga eh. Talaga hindi ko na po talaga kaya. Wala po, baka pwede pong mag, mag-work na rin po si kuya. So, you know, um, fell on deaf ear. So, what I did, since sobrang sakit na yun ng mga narinig ko, what I did is, is that I just stopped communicating with her. I have never spoken to my tita for several years. I really distanced myself, not just to her, but a few of my relatives from my mother's side. So, that was what happened. There were a number of times when I felt I was, um, phys- times in my life that I was physically abused and at the same time, I was emotionally abused as well. Now, I have to say that with all the noise in my world, I tried to pay it back with the silence of my heart. So what I did with all these things that happened to me, I just continued to pray. I continued to um, pray for, the, for my family, pray for the situation, and pray to God that, that He would help me and that He would continue to grant me the grace to accept everything. Um, today, as I mentioned earlier, and as we all know, my mother is still in prison. But we love each other more so dearly every day. And that we continue to still dream together even more now. Last week when I visited her, her wish for me was, Anak, sana maging maayos na maayos ang buhay mo at makasa- makapangasawa ka ng tamang tao. Ay, sinabi niya pala yun. Makap- <laughs> Kailangan ko kasi i-record. Makapangasawa ka ng tamang tao. Ayan. My tita, who crushed my heart, um, it was the grace of the Lord that I felt last year. I was moved. Despite what happened, I was moved to call her. And she was shocked, but pleasantly surprised to hear my voice on the other line. So she cried and cried, and she also apologized for what happened, and she told me that we should just leave everything behind us now. She said also that she missed me. And in fact, she was the first one who greeted me happy birthday last week. Um, to end, Jesus helped me get through all the pain, gave me the grace to accept anything and everything that has come my way, gave me that sense of feeling that I'm never alone and that He's there always. I may have been abused many times in different forms, in different ways, but I don't mind giving it back or returning it back with love and forgiveness. My Lord's presence is definitely heaven to me, and that in times of all the challenges in my life, He has never abandoned me. I realized also that I needed to experience that rock bottom of my life so that in the end, I'll always, always know that Jesus is at the rock of the bottom. Thank you. Give another round of applause for Lynch. Lynch is one of our active leaders. She heads the light groups for the Makati Legaspi district, and she's a regular um, music min- uh, worship min, um, singer and worship leader. She serves God even if she's hurting. She did not wait for her situation to be fixed for her to give back her love to God. While you're waiting, while you're hurting, serve God and experience His release. Lynch loved her tita. She loved those who abused her from a distance. She did not allow the abuse to continue by staying there. She had to physically remove herself from the situation of abuse so that she can be free. It was not selfishness. It is not selfishness. It's self-preservation. Pag nasa airplane ka, di ba, ang sinasabi ng stewardess or ng announcement, before you put the 
oxygen mask on yourself if you have a kid. Ah, sorry, before, don't put the oxygen mask on the kid first. Put it on yourself first, then the kid. Kasi kung nilagay mo sa kid, baka by the time you put it on the kid, pareho kayong mawala. So, you gotta take care of yourself at certain parts in your life, especially when you are being maltreated or abused. Amen? But not all hurts, this is a disclaimer, not all hurts are abuse. There are hurts caused by annoyances. Say annoyances. Kasi baka sabihin nyo, inaapay ako ng girlfriend ko, lagi niya ako sinasabing mataba. Abuse! Ayoko na! Let's define what is the difference between abuse that you should leave and annoyance. Let's call Brother Randy. You need to know the difference between abuse and annoyance. Abuse is something that's deliberately done to you. Annoyance is just annoyance. It's, it's something that will make you ask, annoyance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when my dad was alive <clears throat> my dad passed away in 1997 but I remember this day when he was alive one morning I saw him he was lying on the bed and he was, he was uh, squirming in pain excruciatingly painful he had something in his tummy in his abdomen and he, he, he was squirming in pain and we decided to bring him to uh, a doctor we decided to bring him to a doctor. We brought him to the doctor, and the doctor examined him, and the doctor said, something's wrong with the gallbladder, um, and uh, they needed to, I think, remove that thing. And it, it's, it's something, some, somewhere here, it's a gallbladder problem, so he said, you, you need to go and have that removed. So we went home, and while we were getting ready right, to bring him back, so that um, the gallbladder will be removed, okay? He, he was still squirming in pain, but I, the, I, I, I distinctly remember that turn, okay? He turned towards one side, and as he did that, okay, pardon me, as he did that, he passed gas. I, I, like, it's, it's, it's the loudest, I think. Loudest I can remember. Okay, uh, you, okay. I know you're what you're thinking. This guy's really gross, but I'll tell you some more. It didn't just sound awful; it smelled awful as well. Okay, but when when he passed gas, and it was it was like the longest I've heard. Okay, <laughs> about fourteen seconds. <laughs> Ew! Ew! <laughs> Imagine, di ba? And, and then when, when he passed gas, he said, Nawala. <laughs> so my dad didn't have a gallbladder problem. He had a gas problem. Sometimes we need to know if it's a, a, a life-threatening gallbladder problem or it's just gas. Alright? We need to know if it's abuse or if it's just gas. <laughs> Or annoyance. Yeah, you need to know. Because if you don't, if you don't differentiate and if you, don't, if you can't determine what the difference is, you will have. You will, you will solve the, the, the gas problem with a gallbladder procedure. You, you get what I'm saying? Hello? You get what I'm saying? So you need to know. Because if it's gas problem, treat it with a gas solution. And if it's a gallbladder problem, treat it with a gallbladder solution. Many times, we, 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 we think that what's happening to us is abuse when it's just annoyance. And we look for anti-abuse solutions. Anti-abuse solutions. Now, what's the difference between abuse and annoyance? Abuse is harmful. Annoyance is harmless. Can you say that? Harmless. I believe that 99% of the hurts that we feel are just annoyance. 
are just annoyance. You just need to know and ask yourself na, talaga, annoyance. Annoyance. <laughs> I'll give you an example. <clears throat> my wife and I, you know, I love my wife very much. Is she still here? She's still here? Goodness. No more? She went home? Okay, good. <laughs> You know, when I got married, I told you she's a neat freak and she has a list of, of the germ, all the germs in the world and she knows them by name. She knows them. Uh, she knows how they look like and they're friends, okay? No, no, no. They're not friends. They're enemies, okay? So when, when, I, when, I, when I got married, I, first time I saw her, um, <clears throat> how she was inside the bedroom, I, I, I needed to, I, I could not like... Like right now, I'm wearing this. When I get home, I can't, I can't sit on the bed because I, I'm outside clothes and, it's, and she is wearing bed clothes and she, I can't sit on the bed. So I need to change to bed clothes. But when I'm lying down with my bed clothes and they call us for dinner, I can't use my bed clothes because I have to have a dining, dining room clothes. And so I have to change again and then I have to go there. And then when, when I'm there um, uh, and, and I go back, I cannot sleep. I cannot just lie on the bed because I have to change my bed clothes. That's why I didn't like going around the house because I have a bed, living room clothes, bedroom clothes, kitchen clothes. And, and that really annoyed me. <laughs> because that's not me. She's, she's, she knows the germs and she has, she has strategies to eliminate them. But me, I'm friends with germs. <laughs> okay? So that's annoying to me. And and uh, good thing I was with LOJ already. <laughs> because I said, oh, is this how we're going to live for the rest of our lives? But you know what? One day I just, I just said, well, it's not something that will change my life. So, and, and I think it's going um, to be good for me. So uh, now I'm a cleaner, Randy, that you're looking at. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I learned to accept that, that thing, that, 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 that thing that annoys me. Um, sometimes you just need to, to, to think and say, well, it's not really harmful, it's not really life-changing, so might as well. So now, now uh, I, again, I remember that time when I, I shared a room with George, George Cabrel. I'm not saying George is dirty. <laughs> No, but when I, when I shared a room with him, and I was, about, I was so tired, I was about to sit on the bed. And this was George. It was just George. I was about to sit, and then I remembered, oh, I haven't changed to my bed clothes yet. <laughs> it, 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 now, now I'm not annoyed with that anymore because it's, it, it, I don't think it's abuse. <laughs> and uh, you, you get what I'm saying? And what, what, what about me? How, how, do, how do I annoy my wife? I told you I'm friends with germs. And... Uh, my, my wife hates it when, when, like, when I, I like to leave a trail, okay? When, when I'm changing, okay? So, like, I remove my jacket, I leave it there, and then, and so, so you know if my pants have been worn for two weeks already, when I remove it, it can stand. <laughs> it, 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 it will walk to the hamper on its own. So, I, uh, so my wife hates it when, when, I, when she sees, what are these? And every day, I'm, I'm telling you, up to today. She will tell me, ano to? Labaan ba to? <laughs> and, uh, and, and, that's, and, and she, she told me, the other night I asked her, um, Tessa, what do you don't like about me? What is it that I do that um, really annoys you? And she said, well, hmm, yun nga, <laughs> ito, makalat, and then, Ito, hindi maayos, hindi ano. Um, and, then, and then I, I kept, I, I, I continued listening to her and I said, ito nga, ito nga. And then she said the, the most wonderful words. And she said, kaya lang, naisip ko, ganun talaga. Kaya gina, ginagawa ko na lang. Like, like I, I, I'm, not the, I'm not the person who will put a two-inch aisle between clothes that are folded, okay? White shirts, two two two-inch aisle, colored shirts. If I, if, I get, if I get a shirt there, you know, uh, what was once segregated is, is now like mixed up. So you have colored white, colored white, and the aisles are gone. And she said, hmm, ganun talaga. That's annoyance. 
It's not abuse. 99%. Alright? You, you get what I'm saying? And uh, many times our strengths are also our weaknesses. And you have to understand that. That sometimes the other person is not really abusive. It's, you're, just, you're just annoyed because different is not necessarily bad. Different is just that. Different. You may do things differently and that's just it. And if only we can accept each other. If only we can give, give each other, you know, give, give, give each other slack. Come on. It's just different. It's just different. She likes, she likes to check the locks 18 times before she goes inside the room. Me, I check it once. Sometimes I don't even check it. <laughs> but just, just like that. And, and, and it, 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 can't be, it can't be abusive. So 99%, I believe that. But, but if it's real abuse and you know that it's abuse, I guess I suggest you, you walk away. You just, you just walk away. Now, annoyances can be advantages, and you know why? And in my case, annoyances can be, can be advantages because there are times when we talk, Tessa and I, we talk about it, and we talk about how we can avoid annoying each other. How we can avoid annoying each other. And it can be, can be advantageous. All right? So here's, here's my message. Avoid abuse. Avoid abuse. Accept annoyance. Can you say that? Avoid abuse. Accept annoyance. Okay, I'm going to give you quickly, quickly. We need, to, we need to wrap this up. I'm going to give you a test. Okay? I'm going to give you a test. Tell me if it's abuse or annoyance. Okay? Are you game? All right, test number one. If someone insults you and constantly and tells you that you're, you're no good and worth nothing, is that abuse or annoyance? Abuse, very good. Go, stay away. Num test number two. If someone keeps lying to you, cheating on you, stealing from you, is that abuse or annoyance? Abuse. Number three. If someone's temper is out of control and becomes violent and you live in constant fear, is that abuse or annoyance? Abuse. Test number four. If someone is impatient, Laging mainit ulo or irritable or moody. Is that abuse or annoyance? Annoyance. Minsan mainit lang talaga ulo niya. Lahat talaga. Sakyan mo na lang, di ba? Um, madalas siya magalit. Di pa ba mo siya? Siya naman mga high blood. Siya naman kukulubot yung mukha. Alright? Test number five. If someone is sloppy, <laughs> aray, disorganized, <laughs> and forgetful, is that abuse or randy? <laughs> Is that abuse or annoyance? Annoyance. So, pogi naman, di ba? <clears throat> Test number six. If someone, if someone is like shopping, guys, for hours, and you hate shopping, <laughs> abuse. <laughs> is that abuse or annoyance? Di ba? Just stay in the cafe and read. You know, that's, I know a lot of people in my family, usually the guys are like that, but the girls, uh, yeah, that's abuse. <laughs> um, I, I just want just to end before, before I ask to, to take over. Um, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, it says, I, I, I love this, and this is how the world will, will, will live in peace, okay? Bear with each other and forgive one another. Bear with each other and forgive one another. We, we need to live in peace, okay? So for married people, here's what I want to tell you. Stop trying to change your spouse. Huh? And, and, and if you don't have a spouse, and this is what I want to tell you. Stop trying to change the people around you. What's important is that you change. Sometimes God allows these people to walk into our lives, not so we can change them, but so that we can be changed. Amen? So if it's abuse, flee. If it's annoyance, forbear. Amen? Let's all stand. Hallelujah. If it's abuse, flee. If it's annoyance, forbear. If, 
that's that verse in the Bible in Colossians, the word forbear was used. Bear with one another or forbear one another. In other versions, it says forbear means make allowance or be tolerant with one another or try to understand one another. If it's annoyance, forbear. But if it's abuse, flee. Amen? Clear? If you're in an abusive relationship, and we're going to come before the Lord right now and pray for surgery to happen in our lives. If it's, in, it's already bordering on abuse, the Lord is telling you right now, it might be time to leave. But if it's just annoyance, then it might be time to grow so that you can extend love and be tolerant and that love will change the person. How did David love amidst his hurts, amidst his abuse? You know his secret? He did not just flee from Saul. He did not just run away from the hurt. He ran toward God. If you're in an abusive situation, don't just remove yourself and run away from hurt. But run toward your God. Because He will take care of you. And one day, He will take care of them if you trust in Him. Amen? His arms are open to accept you. No matter how dirty you feel you are, that made you a victim of abuse. David, in one of his many psalms, he has a lot of psalms, but in one of his many heart cry psalms, Psalm 13, it says, O Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long will you look to the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? He was talking about his pain and bringing it to the God he loves. He continues, Turn and answer me, Lord. O Lord my God, restore the sparkle to my eyes or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat, especially Saul, saying we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. He was talking about his prayer. From pain, he turned to prayer. Then the final part says, But I will trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because He is good to me. From pain to prayer to praise. If you run away from the abusive situation in your life, Bring your pain to God. He will welcome it. He accepts your anger at Him at times because that's the only way you will release. You will find release. Then pray and ask God what you need and want. But then don't forget to praise because it's when we acknowledge God's Lordship over our lives that His love will really flood us with grace. Amen? Can I call the team on stage? Amidst your hurting, run to God. And our message for tonight, I repeat that. Let love heal you. Please repeat that. And now we say, let God's love heal you as we come before Him. Amen? I'll ask our builder, Brother Randy, to lead us in prayer tonight. You have to understand one thing about annoyance. If you don't deal with annoyance and you just let one thing that annoys you on top of another thing that annoys you, slowly that annoyance takes the form of abuse. And it looks like abuse. It sounds like abuse, but it's really not. So, so my, my, my encouragement to you is that deal with every annoyance, one annoyance at a time. And... Uh, so that you won't you won't see it as abuse. I want, want to speak to those who have been hurt, who have been abused in their lives. 
yes, it's important for for you to know when to walk away. All right? But maybe some of you here are the ones who abused others. Maybe unknowingly you abused some people in your life. Maybe the closest people in your lives. I want you to know that there's hope. I want you to know that there's hope. That God cares for the abused. And God also cares for the abuser. God cares for the abused in that He doesn't want the abused to be continuously abused. But He also cares for the abuser. That He doesn't want the abuser to remain an abuser. Amen. But He wants both to be recipients of His love. Yes. So tonight, we're going to deal, we're going to pray for the abused. And we're going to pray for the abuser. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you're clueless. But maybe because of this talk, you're, you're slowly realizing, oh, oh yeah, maybe I was so insensitive. Maybe I didn't see that coming. God has a plan for you and there's still hope. If you're abused, if you've been abused in whatever way, I want you to close your eyes. And we're going to pray for healing. We're going to pray for healing that the Lord will soothe your souls with the healing balm of His love. Close your eyes, lift your hands to God. If you're comfortable with that, we're going to pray. Father, we pray for every person who's been hurt in this room. Oh Lord, let your love just... Let your love just soothe us, oh Lord. Let your love just comfort us and make us numb to the pain, O oh Lord. That as we got hurt, Lord, we pray that you make us forget all these hurts. As you embrace us, as you fill us with your love. O oh Lord, I pray that you embrace every person who's been hurt, every person who's hurting. I pray that you physically embrace them and make them feel your love right now, Lord. The warmth of your love right now and remind us Lord God that there's hope there's recovery there's there's a chance Lord that we will get healed and in fact that's your promise that there's healing for us in your love in Jesus name Father I pray for those who have abused others Lord you said in your word that come let us reason no matter how red your sins are I will make you whiter than snow maybe Lord we've abused and hurt people maybe we've hurt people because because we were insensitive because we were just thinking about ourselves Father give us another chance give us another chance to be to be carriers and givers of your love give us another chance to be conduits, O oh Lord God, that we will no longer abuse, but we will begin to heal. Yes, Jesus. That we will begin to heal us, and we will begin to heal the people we've hurt. Father, I pray that your love will just change all the people here tonight. Amen. All for your greater glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Maybe some of you have been praying, Oh Lord, how long will this be? Oh Lord, how long must I endure? Oh Lord, how long must I dream? How long must I wait for the answer to my prayers? I want you to know that when your faith is perfected, then the miracles happen. So I'm going to ask you to lift your dreams, lift your aspirations, lift your prayers, lift your wishes to the Lord right now. If you have that novena to God's love, lift it up. If you don't have, just put your hands on your chest and say, Lord, I have a dream too. When your faith has been perfected, then your prayers will come true. Then your answers will come. Your miracles will happen. Father, I pray for perfect faith. I pray that you will give all my brothers and sisters, all of us here, a faith that has been perfected through all the pain that we've gone through, through all the discouragements, through all the frustrations, O oh Lord God. After all, it is only when we learn from these that we really grow. And that it is only when we learn from these that our faith grows. And Father, we say a prayer from a position of humility asking that you do with us as you please that as we lift up our dreams to you lord you do it lord when you feel that it's time to do it when you know that it's time for us to experience it father in humility as we lift up to you our dreams we declare in faith that all these dreams will come true one day in jesus mighty name amen and amen setting us free thank you for surgery Lord in Jesus name Amen okay, take your seats for a while palakpan at si Lord Woo. were you blessed tonight? next week we talk about recovery in any hurt, heart attack and hurt attack we started with history then surgery, then we go to the recovery room and we will repair what was broken. Amen? Amen. So please tell your seatmates, sabi nyo katabi nyo, see you next Thursday. I reserve mo na ang March 2 mo because it will be an amazing time. Amen? Let's end the series together. Let's give the Lord another round of applause. As we invite you to prepare your love offering and invite you to Join us in the mission by giving and help sustain what we do here at the feast. 
Let me read through some announcements. First of all, we'd like to welcome all the first-timers in the house. Please stand up if you're a first-timer. We know who you are. You have the red button. So, wala kang kawala. We, we branded you without you knowing. Thank you for coming, first-timers. Thank you for... We know it's not an accident you're here. If you're beside a first-timer, give them a high-five. Give them a fist bump. Can we pray for you? Extend your hands towards the first-timers around you. Father, we thank you for the gift of new friends. We know that it is not an accident that they are here. We know that you wanted them to experience something amazing tonight. And we thank you for that. Lord, we pray that you bless their lives, Lord, and fill them to the overflowing. Whatever is in their dream, whatever is in their list, we pray grant the first three dreams, Lord Jesus, within this year in Jesus' name. And we pray that you bless them with their best year ever because they said yes tonight to attend the feast. And we pray that you bring them back next week, Lord, with more friends so that more and more people will experience your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Palakpang natin ng first-timers. Natin, first-timers, after the last song, please go to the back, right side. Nandun yung first-timers booth. First-timers, please go there after the feast. We will give you a special gift. Thank you. Next announcement, we have two activities. One for the singles and one for the couples. For all the singles, raise your hands. All the singles in the house, raise your hands. On March 18 to 19, next month na, we have a wonderful venue for the Love Life Retreat. This is already batch 15. Imagine, in the eight years of our existence, 15, 14 batches have been blessed, have been changed, yeah. have been reignited. 14 batches of singles have experienced life anew. So please yeah. be a part of batch 15. Go online at our website, feastmakati.com, to register. And uh, pay two, two, the, the fee is 2500 for the two-day uh, two retreat, inclusive of transportation, lodging, and board. Please pay. For those who have signed up, if you have signed up, we need you to settle or uh, to pay within this week. We have to reserve your slot bago mawala. So if you have already signed up and if you are going, please make a way to register and to pay this week. Amen? For the couples, can I raise, see a raise of hands of the couples? Married and those in relationship. Magjowa, raise your hands. Tayo naman, we have a couples ministry Valentine evening. This Saturday night at Crow Cafe right across, we will have our um, Every Day With You is, I don't, is a Valentine. So we have a special activity. Please sign up outside. It's a special date night with other couples. So we'll spend a, a, a wonderful time with co-couples. It's only 1600 per couple for the two of you. So you can get to, there's dinner, there's fellowship, there's music, and a wonderful time to grow with people like you. Amen? Next, we'd like you to bring out your phones. Take out your, bring out your phone right now, everyone. If you haven't done this last week, we want you to do this this week. And we will do this every week until we get all of your numbers. If you are from Globe, please get type in the number of the Globe number there. If you, are from, if you have a smart line or smart affiliated line, type in the smart number there. And if you have a sun line, type in the number. If you have not yet last week, please do it this week. So we'll give you a little more time for that. So, nakuha niyo number. Don't press send yet. Sa message, write your name. That's it. If your name, if your name is Pro, Procopio or something, just put your nickname, what you want us to call you. Nyare, Macho Relova. Parang ganun. If that's your name. <laughs> that's mine, eh, sorry. <laughs> so put your name. Got it? The number is there. You got the number? Your name? Send. Thank you for your one peso. That's not, it doesn't go to us. It goes to your network. But we will reply to you. We will give you inspiration during the week. And we will continue to announce things for you. Amen? So every week we'll do that. If you, were not, if you already signed up last week, you don't need to do this. But if you haven't yet, we want to connect with you that way. Amen? Pastoral care, if you want someone to pray over you, if you want a listening ear, please go to our pastoral care booth on the other side of the stage. We will minister to you there. And use the invite cards that we will give out to help you invite people to the feast. Give it to the bank teller that you meet, the UV Express, Express mate, the Uber pool mate you have met. Finally, please connect with us online. We are so active on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify. 
the easiest way is to go to feastmakati.com for the links to all our pages. And when you post, post with the hashtag feastmakati. Alright? Okay, before we give uh, our offerings, I just want you to pray and join me in praying and thanking the Lord uh, for uh, this guy beside me. Um, as I announced last week, we're going to pray for him. Because starting uh, tonight, starting tonight, um, to is going to be uh, leading the Feast Makati Legaspi, this particular feast. So I'm turning over the reins uh, to our dear To Relova. You know, like a, a father, di ba? Pag kami negosyo siya, meron siyang ginagawa, enterprise, tapos nakita niya, kaya na ng anak ko. Sige, ha, kinana, kakina, ibibigay sa iyo. Ang lahat na natin na ginawa. So, so I'm, uh, I'm turning over the reins to, to someone who is, uh, who is uh, a man after God's own heart. And you know, he's been serving since he was nine years old. Tama? Tama ba? 12 years old. He's been serving the Lord since he's 12 years old and uh, you'll be in very good hands. And uh, again, I, I ask you to, to uh, give, him the, give him the support and uh, continue to invite people because I know this place will be a place where God will continually work, continue to work and continue to touch people. All right? Can you extend our hands towards him and we'll pray for him that the Lord will anoint him. Father, we pray for nothing less than your anointing tonight that you will pour on to your anointing that he will begin to lead this feast with ease father we pray that you use every experience that that he has gone through in his life all all years of serving you lord god i know what you said in esther that to was made for such a time as this that he will now lead feast makati ligas i pray that you use him to touch more people i pray that you use him to touch thousands of people in Makati that you will use him in his life Lord to bless all the people who will walk through those doors and all the people that we will share the word to because of what he has spoken here in front be with him Lord God bless his family I pray for Anne um, who will be a support to talk I pray oh Lord God that you will also continue to bless her and allow and to lift up Toss' hands whenever he's tired and to also give him a back massage when he's tired. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Woo-hoo. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> um, before we continue... I, I, I can see that uh, coming. Okay. <laughs> Before we continue, um, I was just a short sharing. Um, hindi ko akalain na when Randy called me last August of last year to build a feast, na ito yung feast na ipapabuild niya. I thought he'd give me a new feast because it's never easy to inherit an organization. There will always be people who, alam yon, it's never easy. But I remember bro- Brother Obit Cabrillas, the first time I attended the builders' meeting, nasa CR kami nun, sabi niya, so my first advice, don't compare. I will never be Randy Borromeo. I will never be Jan Silan. Mas guapa yung dalawa sa akin. But I will be Torilova. And I have lots of stories to tell you. I have lots of life experiences, faith, business, that I hope you learn from. I will not hold you if you want to go. I will not hold you. But if you stay, get ready to be blessed. Our team will build this feast. Amen. And that includes you. So two, sa- two Thursdays from now, we will be conducting a ministry fair. We will invite you to join the kitchen as we build the feast. And I want Amen. you, if ever you're blessed here, it's time to get up and pass it on. Amen. Amen. We need you to serve with us. Amen. A lot of people in Makati need the Lord. Amen. And so if you allow me, I will build with you. Amen. Amen. But this night is not just about me. This guy does not know. We like to spend the night also thanking Whoa. Daddy Randy. Seriously, I want to honor. We want to honor Randy. In the eight years of existence of Makati Feast, of Feast Makati, he has led this feast through thick and thin. He has spoken here every week. For almost every Thursday. And hindi biro yon. 
he is he f- comes from Fairview. He, he works in Cubao. He goes here on a weeknight to serve you. So palakpak natin si Brother Randy. Yeah. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Watch this video. Oh, ka, no? wow. <laughs> Parang kuya germs. Ganda. Yeah. Tapos na yan. <laughs> Ganda, no? I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. Medyo may team ka dito, Rands. <laughs> Eight years. Oh. I'd like to honor Brother Randy Borromeo for uh, for an amazing eight years. It's not the end. We will not. It, we will not. This is not the last time we'll see him. He's still, the, <laughs> he's, still the, he's still the district builder for the Feast Makati and Tagig. So he will serve and continue to build Feast Glorieta on Sunday and Feast SMR on Saturday. So he is here. And we'd like to give him sana aking assistance. Wow. Can you invite some people to come on stage? Wow. We have guests. Birthday ko lang, ano? These people were blessed by Randy as part of our feast and now they're wow. feast builders of other feasts. Let's welcome Brother Drew Scostro who's now the feast builder in Laguna in Santa Rosa, Laguna and Brother Jan Silan who's a feast builder in wow. Feast Makati Salcedo. Check, check, yeah. Dad. I'm not going to go to the house. Honor Randy. Na. Go, go. Uh, um, um, just would like to honor uh, Brother Randy. This is the first feast where me and my wife, my girlfriend, pa lang kami noon, attended. And uh, May 2009, I remember. 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 The same feeling, exact the same feeling, the first time I attended. We attended sa Bilkasa Feast and we were sabi na, Uy, baka si Brother Bo nandun. Tapos pag-attend namin, eh na, siguro after worship na si Brother Bo. Tapos, dumabas si Brother Randy. Sabi ko, napakain natin si Brother Bo. <laughs> but the, the moment Brother Randy spoke God's word, grabe, grabe, grabe ka Brother Randy. Um, he spoke God's word with authority prophesying blessings after blessings and it moved me it it moved also my, my wife my ex-girlfriend and in fact the, the reason I resigned from work and to go to mission was because of the feast here in the Gaspi and uh, thank you brother Randy tama you. Da- daddy ka namin dito <laughs> I learned mission I remember the first talk I heard from you was all about God's love it's a, it's a topic na hirap na hirap akong i-share but when you shared it during that time, sabi ko, but ang dali niyo sabihin. And I felt that, and it made miracles in my life already. And, uh, thank you, Brother Randy. Oh, Salamat thank you. for being a blessing. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Kala ko nga sa Makati ka magbibuild eh. Punta ka sa iba. Hurt attack. 
Annoyance. Thank you, Drews. Naatasan din ako magsalita. At Heidi. Thank you for your trust, Brother Andy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for loving me. You inspire me to preach. You inspire me to... I was, I was, a, I was, I'm, I'm a regular attendee in May 2009. Then he asked me to, to welcome first timers. I did that. He asked me to become an usher. I did that. I, he asked me to, to co-worship leader. I did that. He asked me to worship. I did that. He asked me to co-preach. I did that. I, he asked me to guest. And he, he just trusted me to build a feast. And, um, and thank you for inspiring me. Most especially in losing weight. Thank you for. <laughs> yeah, and third, kita niyo mga picture ko na kaya, de ba? Thank you, thank you, Hans, and uh, I will love you always. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir, Daddy. You know, I, I I always say this that I won't. Uh, um, in, in Japan, when you see uh, uh, a student, kanya naging successful. You don't throw a party for the student. 